G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I'm uh, going to be running you through, uh, I guess, my final predictions for the 2022 draft, which is right around the corner. I thought it was Tuesday. It's on Monday. Uh, so that's actually good. That works out for me. It means we will be able to do a live stream for day one uh, of the drafts. Unfortunately, won't be able to back it up with day two. But uh, either way, good news. I can stream at least one of the days. And uh, I'll get a few of the boys around, have a couple of beers, and we'll enjoy the first round. Uh, but obviously, in today's video, I'm going to be predicting the top 30. I'm going to have a crack at uh, going through pick by pick my top 30. I don't have quite the time to really do a detailed one like the last one, so I'm just going to run you through my top 30 and give you some general reasons why I did them. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and, and couldn't quite do a podcast leading up to it with Busher. Um, obviously, I, I've just been busy, and I don't know if Busher's actually been super into the draft this year with Fremantle not really involved. So we will do a draft reaction. But for the time being, I'm going to give you my top 30 uh, right ahead of the draft, which is on Monday, which is great news. As always, guys, we are sponsored by manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs as we're heading into the nicer weather. Uh, it's more more time should be spent in you know investing in your rig and getting into shape. I've been hitting the gym pretty well lately. And of course, with that comes some manscaping obligations as well, making sure you not, not only your balls are smooth, but also your chest and, and all your sort of liquid formulations to round out that routine as well. You get 20% off and free shipping if you go to manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFOOTY20. So if you're a watcher of TRUEFOOTY, you get a great uh, great bonus, I suppose. 20% discount and free shipping. So do yourselves a favor and check out the website. All right, without further ado, I am going to crack into this top 30. There's a little bit of late mail in this, uh, I guess, just trying to read the rumors and come up with my own opinions. Very hard to get influenced so easily by these, these rumors. And I, I think there's a little bit of bullshit put out by clubs as well to try and throw each other off. Uh, I'm not too sure. It could just be journalists uh, clutching at straws as well, but I've had a crack. So there's going to be a, one or two surprises in here. Um, so I'm going to take a punt and uh, I look forward to the criticism. But we'll start off with, uh, the, obviously the top four is fairly locked in. Hasn't actually changed from my last video. Uh, it seems pretty telegraphic. Cadman going to the Giants at pick one, their key forward replacement. Will Ashcroft gets picked. Uh, he's bid on by North Melbourne. He'll go at pick two to the Brisbane Lions. No doubt about where he's going. Uh, so the best key forward in the draft, pick one. And uh, probably the best player universally considered and uh, the best midfielder in Will Ashcroft goes to the Brisbane Lions. I think North had locked in on their pick three and four. I did see, I think Wardlaw accidentally admitted that he was already going to be picked by North Melbourne. So i got him and Harry Sheasel as picks three and four. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the, the top four locked. And uh, pick five with Essendon is where it really opens up. After owning and owning, there's been some mixed rumors about who they're considering. Uh, I've decided to lock in my previous prediction and say they will take Mateus Philippou. Uh, I think he's the best available talent and suits their needs in terms of um, you know a midfielder with a point of difference who kicks goals. Um, I think he's who I would certainly pick, to be honest. Uh, then pick six again. Gold Coast seem to be considering Bailey Humphrey or Ruben Jinby. I'm going to double down on the Ruben Jinby prediction. Apparently, they flew out to Dunsborough um, to see him this week. I think it's been all over the uh, the draft boards and stuff like that. And we don't know if it's true, but assuming it is, that's a pretty big indicator to go all the way to Dunsborough that they're picking him. So a lock in Jinby to the Gold Coast Suns. Then it gets even tougher with the Hawthorne Footy Club. And uh, I think they're on the lookout for a midfielder. And I've got them taking Cam McKenzie because I just think he's a Hawthorne-style pick. Read a little bit that Sam Mitchell is a big fan, but again, uh, you, you can't rely too heavily on rumors. But I just think with his balanced play of inside and out and good skills, he'd make a good Hawthorne player. And I, I think he is best available at that pick. Then you've got Geelong, and it's really hard to peg them. And uh, I don't know if I buy into any of the rumors that who they're looking at. There's been a lot of suggestion, a lot of variety of names, but I'm actually going to pluck a name they haven't really been linked to at all, and that's Elijah Sardis, uh, because I just think he's the best available player. And it makes sense to me that Geelong would look at him. I don't think they necessarily um, have specific midfield needs going into this draft. I think it's a case of best available. They've got this luxury early pick, and Elijah Sardis uh, would be a great best available prospect for them. So he's my rough call for that. I'm going to double down on Oliver Hollands to West Coast. Again, I've been umming and ironing this, as you can imagine, as an Eagles fan, agonizing who we're going to pick. I just feel like it's a West Coast pick and I might make myself look silly if we don't take this pick uh, in Hollands on the night. But I just think 
it's just a gut feeling. We'll see how it goes. But again, evenly rated talent. Um, I don't have a, a strong opinion either way. That means Bailey Humphrey falls into the lap of St. Kilda uh, because I found it after Gold Coast at six. I don't really see him going to the Hawks or Geelong. Um, and I think West Coast, it doesn't really scream a West Coast pick. So I've got him sliding all the way to St. Kilda's pick 10 uh, because Cam McKenzie is off the board. Carlton, again, another tough one to pick. They've got a really good spine, and they've got a really good young core midfield. Uh, so, again, I think kind of best available, and I see the... Yeah, this is a really tough one. I've probably got this completely wrong, but I've got them taking Buzzlinger as the best key defender in the uh, in the draft pool. Yes, they've got Weedering. They've got a, a very strong spine, but I feel like he could add a pretty good one-two punch in defense, and with his ability to play attacking... I think he is. Um, I think he's someone who could feature pretty early for them. So that's my rough call again. Buzzlinger to the Blues, epic eleven. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Pick twelve in my head. The Dogs are looking for Buzzlinger. They ideally want to key back, but I think with the midfielders they've lost recently, I think they'll probably pluck a rough in. I reckon this is where Ed Allen falls from Western Australia. They'll get in right before West Coast's second pick and uh, pick with a taller midfielder with a lot of potential. Uh, again, this is just kind of a rough call, just trying to mix it up a little bit. But uh, I think this is about the, the upper end of his draft range, which puts West Coast back on the clock. And again, I hate to admit this, but I've kind of been buying into a little bit of the rumor mill. And the latest rumor mill is that we're looking at Matthew Jefferson, the key forward out of Victoria. So doubling up with Oliver Hollands with the first pick uh, and then backing it up with a key forward. Key forwards are in need, and if he's available, I could see the temptation there, but I'm kind of quietly hoping for two midfielders. At pick 14, Melbourne enter the draft, and this is a bit of a reach, but I consider their ruck needs, and I think they might pluck Harry Barnett out of South Australia. There's one really good ruck prospect in this year's draft, and this is a good time for Melbourne to pick one uh, when they've got a few years development before they're going to really need him with Gordon Grundy there. So I've got Melbourne uh, sort of replacing Luke Jackson uh, with a Harry Barnett type. Then, rounding out my top 15, I have got the Sydney Swans bidding on Jasper Fletcher because uh, this is around about his range, and uh, I think this is a no-brainer. Brisbane are going to match again, so they'll add Ashcroft and Jasper Fletcher as their father-son selections. Then we'll take a look at pick 16 to 30, and this is where Sydney come back on the clock, uh, having had their bid matched for young Jasper Fletcher there, and uh, they've got two picks here, so I think there's a chance they go tall and small. I don't know if I really think their midfield is something they, they're they really lacking in, so I think they've got a bit of a luxury here to pick on need, and I think they might take the punt on a key defender in Lewis Hayes, who is uh, considered by some probably the best key defender in the, in, the, um, in the draft pool this year behind Buzzlinger, or at least, you know, a, a similar quality to Buzzlinger, and... Uh, Again, this is probably about his range. I think the Swans would like to add a key back, and they'd like to get in before the Giants, who have the next pick. And this is where I have the slider, I guess, of this video, and that's Jai Clark falling all the way to pick 17. And look, no real knock on Jai Clark. I just kind of think there's going to be a slider, and he was the one who came out when I, when I did all the math. Um, I guess uh, being a smaller type midfielder, I'm actually a big fan of him. If West Coast call it his name at pick eight, I'm happy. However, the Giants here nab the slider of my draft as the best available midfielder, and I think he's a really, really good talent. So they're looking for mids. He makes sense. Collingwood are then on the clock with their first selection, and uh, with Hayes and Buzzlinger off the board, I think they'd like to get in and pick the best key defender available, and that is Josh Weddle, uh, who's a slightly undersized key back, I think. And I know they just recruited Frampton for that purpose, but again, with, with the way their list is shaping, they're in a position to go tall and have a little bit of a, a prospect there in their back line. So Josh Weddle to the Pies. And then the Swans, uh, having taken Hayes with their first pick, they will pluck Braden George, this is what I'm thinking. Um, I would say a bolter. He's actually slid further because uh, I think it was a broken leg or an ACL this year. I think it might be an ACL. Um, but with the Swans composition where they're at, like I said, midfield strong. A really dynamic forward is what they could use, and there's no real uh, rush to get George right. So I think on talent, he goes higher, but he's missed a bit of football. So he slid a little bit, and I think the Swans will be happy with him at pick 19, which gets GWS back on the clock. And again, they've added Jai Clark, but their midfield has taken a beating 
Braun, uh, Taranto, and Hopper all left this offseason. So I think they're in the position to pick the best available midfielder. And this is where I think they take the tall midfielder in Henry Hustwaite, uh, who's 195 centimeters, the tallest midfielder in the draft crop, uh, even taller than Ed Allen. Uh, at least that's what I've got on my paper here. Things can change, uh, but a very smooth user of the footy, very classy, tall. The Pendlebury type comparison gets thrown around with Hustwaite. So then GWS have another pick, and uh, having no academy bids yet for Ralston, they're still available to take their fourth pick, and I think they'll take the small forward in Charlie Clark, a uh, really sort of dynamic small forward, uh, really good pressure player. They've lost Bobby Hill, and probably best available as well. So a nice balance of picks there for the Giants. So West Coast are now on the clock again with their third pick, and for no particular reason, I think this is roughly where a bid for Alwyn Davy Jr. will come, and uh, I presume Essendon will match it. So Essendon will match a bid here for Alwyn Davy Jr., um, another small sort of dynamic forward midfielder out of Victoria, obviously son of uh, Alwyn Davy, who, uh, gee, it doesn't even feel like that long ago he played, but he was a, uh, a small forward, and uh, from what I gather, his son plays similar. Gee, they look the same as well. So a bit of a no-brainer here. Essendon take uh, Alwyn Davy Jr., which puts West Coast back on the clock. And uh, there is another slider in this draft, and you might hate me for this, but I've got Elijah Hewitt lasting this long to pick 23, and there's been so many mixed reports about Elijah Hewitt. You know, we've heard that St. Kilda's met with him recently, uh, but I think they'll prefer Humphrey in this scenario. The Dogs are also interested, so again, even pick 12 for Elijah Hewitt is not out of the question. There's also been some rumors that he's uh, got some issues outside of football, hasn't interviewed particularly well, and uh, therefore there is a rumor mill suggesting he will actually slide. So maybe this one's just hope, but I think he could last as long as pick 23, and uh, naturally the Eagles attempted to take the best available midfielder. I'd be very, very happy with that. The Bulldogs back on the clock, and I will say that they select Ollie Hotton, who's a uh, smaller sort of medium style, uh, medium forward, uh, who can play through the midfielder and behind the footy as well in defense. Uh, really good skills. I'm a big fan. Would be happy for him at West Coast, as I keep saying, but uh, another really good prospect, and the Dogs will add him to, uh, obviously, Cody Waitman in that forward line. That's a pretty good sort of balanced duo. At pick 25, I've got the Crows matching a bid from North Melbourne for Max uh, Michelani. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I've only seen it written down. Don't know too much about this kid. Uh, a bit of a rangy defender. Seems about the range uh, that he will get bid on. And uh, I think the Crows have accumulated the points to try and uh, to try and match a bid, which will probably come around this range. So again, I could have the, the range of this pick wrong, but I've got it roughly falling here. So North Melbourne are back on the clock, and remember we have taken Warlaw and Sheasel. So I think a key back was kind of on their shopping list a little bit, at least it was last year. I know that in the mid-season draft they added a tall defender, but why not double down on that when you've got um, having added Sheasel and Wardlaw in this draft already? So long story short, I've got Max Grzuski, who's probably the next cab off the rank in terms of tall. He's kind of like a taller utility who plays as an intercepting defender as well as a forward target as well. So I think on balance, that's a good pick for North Melbourne. Hawthorne then, having taken Cam McKenzie at pick seven, uh, they'd probably like a little bit of a tour, but I don't really see any obvious ones in this range, so they'll go best available, and uh, Kobe Burgill is who I've got, and I've, again, I really hope I'm saying that right, it might be Burgill, uh, I'm not too sure, I've seen the highlights, I think he looks like a good prospect as a sort of midfielder forward defender, he's kind of like a utility there, um, this is about his range, and I think uh, it's pretty close to best available uh, for the Hawks at pick 27. So we're down to the last three picks of this draft, Lockie Cowan then joins Collingwood at pick 28 the Tasmanian running defender. Uh, maybe this is a little bit late for him. I think I've seen him as early as the teens and some people think, you know, as late as the 30s. So a bit of a range on Lockie Cowan. I do wonder if him being Tasmanian was a factor because I think he's been outspoken in the sense that he wanted to play for Tasmania and obviously a Tasmanian team's right around the corner. So long story short, I think the, the Pies are in a position to pick uh, a best available sort of running skillful defender who could play pretty early on. So uh, that is my pick for the Pies. Then you got West Coast with their fourth selection and uh, I sort of rationalized in previous videos, I think we'll go best available early, then uh, probably local in the second round at least, uh, if not earlier. And I think with this last pick, we will aim to take uh, a bit of a reach. I can see this reaching for a local role player. And for me, that's Sam Gilby, the running defender. I think it's from Cla he's from Claremont rather, but uh, a high talented defender with um, 
I think his coach compared him to Hayden Young. Obviously, that's a, a massive com- comparison. Uh, but he had an injury plague year with, um, I think it was glandular fever and a broken leg. So rough year for Gilby. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, he gets snapped up by the West Coast Eagles. And then the final pick of my top 30, I've got a player who's probably expected to go earlier than this again, and that's Jacob Constanti. So uh, another small forward to add to Collingwood's dynamic there. Uh, obviously, they've got a few good ones. Bobby Hill, Jack Ginevan, obviously. Um, but I think they've also linked to Charlie Clark with their early pick in pick 18. But for some reason, I, I just feel Weddle was a better prospect there. And then uh, Constanti is probably the best available at 30 based on you know the consensus rankings. Again, this is my amateur opinion, but Constanti at pick 30 is a good value selection. Um, so they've got a good balance of players in this draft. Did my voice just break like a bitch? So that is me racing through my top 30, guys. Um, I guess we can look at some of the teams that had multiple picks and, and consider the, the batch of players they got. So the Giants obviously had Cadman, the key forward. They got some midfielders in Clark and Hustwaite and then balanced that with a small forward for Charlie Clark. I think that's a good, even mix. Brisbane obviously got a uh, multitude of uh, the sons in Ashcroft and Fletcher. I think that's obviously going to happen. North's batch of players were Wardlaw, Sheasel, and then uh, balanced that with a tall utility in Grzuski later in the draft. The Bombers got Philippou and Davy Jr. Hawthorne added McKenzie and Burgell. The Dogs went uh, midfield with Edward Allen and Ollie Hotton. The Swans doubled up with Lewis Hayes and Braden George. Speaking about my boys specifically, uh, they went midfield with the first pick, Hollands. The key forward in Jefferson. They got really lucky with Hewitt. Who would have thought that? Last thing to pick 23. Um, and maybe an Eagles fan did this mock draft, but and finally getting Sam Gilby as well. So another good blend of players from my perspective. It's a bit of a dream draft from West Coast. I'm aware of that. And then finally, Collingwood also had uh, three selections in this top 30 with Weddle, the key defender, balanced that with a skillful running defender in Lockie Cowan and a talented small forward in Jacob Constanti. So there you go, guys. I know I had to rattle through that a little bit, but you've got the visual aid there. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously, there's a couple big calls in there uh, and obviously some players that I missed. So players that I've still got on the board uh, that uh, Shib- Shibkovsky, uh, Shibkowski, Jacob Ryan, uh, Darcy Jones is still on the board as well. Anthony Mankara, I uh, just couldn't fit them in my top 30. Jackson Bins is another one. Uh, these guys could could go as early as the 20s. Um, tw- the teens is probably a bit of a stretch, but that's the way I see it, guys. So let me know in the comments uh, what you disagree with and, and what you cl- hope your club does differently and how happy your club would be with the selections that I've given you. Make sure you join us on Monday night for the draft, guys. It's going to be a good one. I love draft day. It's my favorite day of the year, pretty much. Um, so I look forward to having you with a couple of Bevins as well. Um, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.